The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountain. But now he has promised, once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of this world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. Now this phrase, once and for all, clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking. So only what is unshakable will remain. Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship. I don't know what gives a man the right to speak into another's life. I do know that the greatest teachers that I've encountered have all walked through their own pain and hopelessness but they've come out the other side with a love and a compassion that drives them to a place of such deep desire to help others that I could literally feel the weight of their words as they spoke. Now, with all the love and the power that I possess, I want to take you on a journey. A journey of one of the world's most powerful animals as he learns how to be free and discover what he was created for. This is my story. It's the gospel. This is the living hope. A way to find a window into everything. I'm waiting for the rise. I don't have a church or a program or some religion that I want you guys to join. I don't ever want to get disqualified as one more person that's coming in trying to fix you. But I'm a man that's had his own struggles with addictions and insecurity and fear and violence and it damaged so many of the relationships around me that it was this encounter with working with horses that Jesus revealed to me what his world is really like, what it's like to be a part of a kingdom of light instead of darkness, that I wasn't trapped in the walls and the bars that I thought I was trapped in, that everything that I'd learned up until this point was mostly based on lies. He had invited me into this process of being fathered by him, that I could call him Abba. It was Aramaic for daddy, like it wasn't just dad in the sense that I understood. It was super intimate. And through the vulnerability and the level of connection that he continued to fight for in me, I was set free. Watch that played out in the life of this horse as it interacts with me as its trainer. Put yourself in the horse's position. What is it that you're running from? What is it that you're afraid of? Is your way really working or is it just exhausting you? It's a whole new way for you to consider doing life. With everything that I see going on in our culture and people trying to get help through every sort of means, through its life coaches, programs, therapy, counseling, religion, whatever the next best thing is, I know that there's an ancient truth that makes it to where every one of us created in the image of God, being separated from God, have only one answer. And his name is Jesus. He didn't start a religion. He didn't start a cult. He didn't start a movement. He actually solved the problem of sin being a master over a human being. Sin doesn't have to be your master anymore because he killed it. And that's what he's offering to every one of us is to become people that have been dead in sin and we can become alive in him. And when he pours his spirit into us, he begins to speak new truths. He begins to help you see where the lies are, how you've been deceived. And now this new life that's being created in you Watch it in this horse. See the fact that he didn't even know anything was wrong. He thought his whole life was about staying alive. That's the only instincts that he's got. Eat grass, stay alive, and reproduce. 
He's living out of an instinct. Most people live their lives that way. And if you really look at what they're doing, that's all they're trying to do is stay alive. They're trying to find happiness. They're trying to figure out a way to have relationships. We were created for so much more than that. We get to enjoy those things. But what if the future and the destiny that you're carrying inside of you is something that your mind hasn't even possibly understood yet? This horse will literally spend its entire life running around this trash. It'll spend its whole life being influenced by the ones around it. They can't help him. I have to go after him. And when I find him and he says yes, everything will change. Even with his instincts of wanting to just go back and stay alive, it's my commitment to him and his yes to me that makes it to where this is a forever thing. He said that he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. I want you to watch that played out. It doesn't matter how this horse responds. Once he says yes, I'm all in. And this isn't an empty promise that comes from a religion or a person. This is the, the creator, the author of life, speaking a truth that he's got the power of heaven behind him and all the resources of heaven saying that I'm coming after you. Could have been worse, but that's not the way to start the morning. She is not happy about leaving home. She's never been off this ranch, so no, it's this first time in the trailer, but first time to leave this property. But what she doesn't know is she's got a date with destiny. we're willing to step outside the lines of our comfort zone we're trapped in our own reality and even if you don't like your reality not very many people are willing to go through the the challenge of change to see what's better and that's where this field is going to have big challenge right up front is everything's going to be brand new to her. She's never seen anything that she's going to see today. She's never been handled this way. She's never even had an opportunity for change because up until now she's just been fed and taken care of, kept alive basically, but doesn't know anything about what she was created for. keeps going through these phases where I want you but I don't know if I can trust you. I love what I feel when I'm around you but there's something calling me to keep moving. Five minutes now every time hardships come her way she's turned away from me rather than turning to me. So what we're looking for is what she just did. When she stopped, she looked to me rather than looking over the fence trying to find a way to escape. The most heartbreaking thing for me, and I know that this has gotta be God's heart, is to see men that have been labeled and they've labeled themselves as though you're some sort of animal or your, your SID number has something to do with who you are. Who is it that gets to speak identity into you? Is it your past and your story that's telling you who you are? Or is there a higher truth? 
Is there someone that you can give permission to speak into your identity? That this is who you are. You are my beloved son. My favor is resting on you. You were created in my very image. What would happen if you were actually free right now? What would happen if you were partnering with God himself and he began to teach you how to navigate and gave you all these new tools to where you carry his presence? Every word that he speaks is now directing your life that you can literally fill your, your mouth and hear yourself saying the words of God. He told us to guard our hearts with all diligence, protect it, because out of it, that's what the issues of your life are flowing from. That's why when Jesus walked through a world that was so filled with pride and hatred and anger and fear and segregation, Jesus walked in the middle with zero agenda other than I'm going to reveal to you a perfect father. And when he did that, 2,020 years later, we're still sitting here having a conversation on how is it that this power is still alive and it's flowing inside of men and women. And it's making them to where they don't have to be afraid of being in prison or outside of prison because it doesn't matter where they go. They carry this power, this identity, this hope, and a vision that makes them unstoppable. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulse of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. You have received the spirit of full acceptance. I know that I was in my own prison and what it felt like to know that I can't fix this. I can't make myself better. And then I needed something. It's an everlasting hope, and it's not just for me. We're gonna go storm the gates. Like we're gonna charge these mountains. We're gonna go after people. We're gonna be a part of the solution. We are gonna become the lights that the world gets to see. There's no longer anything that gets to hold us back. If you've said yes, if you're in and it's game on, then every one of us become brothers. And we get to lock arms and we get to hold each other up and we get to inspire each other. And we get to have words that come from heaven that flow through our mouths because now we're like living testimonies of what it is that God can do with a life. When Jesus said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, it makes it to where now we get to look at this man, Jesus, walking around on earth, perfect, without sin, tempted in every way, walking right into everybody's mess. He would walk into the, the most dysfunctional lifestyles. He would walk into demonic situations. He would walk into religious situations and nothing changed inside of him. He kept the same heart posture toward, I represent truth, I embody truth, I love people. I don't, I don't judge them. 
I'm not afraid of their sin. And I can see no matter how somebody acts, no matter what's going on in my life, that his heart posture towards me, his feelings towards me, his words towards me, nothing ever changes. He's constant. And he just continues to remind us of who we are. You can see all of the violence and all of the anger and all of the fear. He doesn't run away from it. He stands right there in the middle of it and waits and says, peace, be still. And when we're done throwing our fits, he's still waiting. What if there's a love that's so perfect that no matter what you've done, whether it's good or it's bad, his view of you is continually stays the same. As we partner together, he becomes so sensitive to my ways that he's gonna look at the entire world around him differently because he's now seen himself differently. He's actually caught up in this eternal thing that makes it to where not only is he partnering with something that he doesn't even fully understand, he just knows that it's good. That he's got a really, really good father. And that this one that he's become one with is now taking him to places that he never would have dreamt of. That there's actually greener pastures. There's great works to be done. That he was built to do things that he didn't even know he was capable of doing. Gifts that were locked up inside of him that he could never release on his own. Incapable of fixing himself, he's now inherited this eternal perspective to where for generations after him are gonna be able to eat of the fruit of his life. That his life is now leaving a legacy. Everything that he's doing in his life now is gonna last forever. It's not just the works of man, it's the works of God. It's to where our lives get to echo. And the echo is not going to sound like pain and hurt and fear and convict. It's going to be overcomer. It's going to be the beloved ones. It's going to be hope carriers, ones that walk around lit up to where they become the light of the world. Jesus said that he came as the light of the world and then he called us the light of the world. He said we can't hide our lives anymore. Now he wants to put us up on high places to where we'd be like a city on a hill. People would be drawn to us, not so that they could honor us, but we could point them to the King of Kings because we, we can't become their source. We can point them to the source. You're gonna cause revival, a revolution. It's gonna be a revolution that's so filled with love and compassion, all the differences are gonna go away. that is mostly void of good fathers. Jesus invited us into the most intimate way of addressing God. In Aramaic, the word was Abba. It was like Daddy. Addressing God as your own father. Not like an earthly father, but this beautiful picture of what Jesus displayed of love, joy, peace, and patience kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, that this is the type of father we have. God created diversity. Diversity is supposed to ex expand. Diversity is supposed to add to 
what it is that we're not. And when we celebrate each other and we're partnering with God, now every person around you that you maybe saw as different than you, that you needed to isolate yourself from, or that you would judge because of their differences, now because of this thing called love, this thing that makes it to where that is actually someone else created in the image of God, because you've seen yourself the right way, now you get to see everybody around you the same way. You get to see them the right way. Even if they're operating completely out of their fear and their hurts and their lack of identity, you can say, that's one more person that's got a hope and has got a future. I wonder how God would use me to speak into their life. Jesus was a straight shooter. You've watched as we've interacted with all these horses, every one of them is unique, but they all had the same problem and they all have the same solution. They had to decide if they're gonna turn away from doing things their own way and running around in circles, looking for some way to get out, or they can turn and they can trust. And in that, they become free. Sin is the problem. It's not the bad things we're doing, it's something inside of us that's separate from God. And Jesus fixed that. And every one of us get to make this decision. And today is your day. You're either gonna say yes or you're gonna say no. Jesus didn't play around with it. He said you're either for me or you're against me. Either allow me to teach you and become one with you, help you understand what you're created for, or turn away and you can keep pursuing every other direction. There's thousands of directions that you can go to serve the world and to serve yourself. There's only one way to the kingdom. There's only one way that we can come into oneness with God and allow him to be this father that's just continuing to pour out this extravagant love on us. It's Jesus. He said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the father except through me. This is the greatest invitation that can ever be extended to mankind, that you and I get the right to become sons and daughters of God. Jesus, we put our full trust in you. We thank you for your sacrifice and for the ability to be forgiven. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to fill us, that through the blood of Jesus, that you can make us a new creation. My life is yours. This is just the beginning. We're committed to making more videos and we're going to have people from all different walks of life sharing their stories and helping introduce new principles. We believe that everything that was intended to destroy you, all the things that were used against you, are now gonna become the catalyst for you becoming the greatest version of yourself. That your family and your legacy is gonna be different as a result of you being the one that made the decision to change.
we honor your courage.